Well, today we've been walking around and enjoying the display and the propagation gardens of Paul Black. Paul Black is an iris hybridizer and he's also owner of Mid-America Gardens. And Paul, thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Brenda. I'm enjoying having you here. Well, Paul is going to explain some of the process behind hybridizing of iris. And Paul, what are some of the things that you want to look for when you're doing that, when you're selecting? One of the things that we look for is the vigor and health of the plant. We want nice blue-green foliage and a nice clump forming plant. You can see this has really nice foliage right here. It's nice and blue-green and no, no brown spots on it. Mm -hmm. And then over here, we have some foliage that's browned off and has some spots on it. That isn't what we really want in our garden. We would like to have some foliage that's really, really nice and green. Well, in addition to the plant, what else are you looking for? We're also looking for stalks that are well branched. This one has a very nice branch stalk. There's one, two, three branches and a spur right here. What this does is give more flower production. You have more flowering points on it. Mm -hmm. Also, we're looking for the number of buds in each of those placements. Here's a bud here, and then backup bud here. That means this is going to bloom, and then after it's finished, this backup bud is going to bloom. So instead of having just a day or two of bloom from one, one flower, you end up with several weeks because of the backup buds in there. Okay. And um, what are you looking for as far as the actual flower is concerned? Okay, we're looking for nice flower form that has a nice wide petal or a fall right here. And what that does is to give you a lot of color in the garden. We're also looking for standards that stand up like this and give the classic iris form. If the standards are weak, then that means that's going to fall out like that and you don't have that nice pretty classic iris form with the standards up here in the falls. Okay. Well, um, how do you go about actually crossing an iris, what's the process there? Okay, and that's the most exciting part is the hybridization process. That is the way that we get new colors and patterns and hopefully improved vigor and, and plant in the iris. And let me show you here. These are the standards of the iris and these are the falls. In between the standards is a style arm right here. Underneath this style arm is the anther of pollen right here. So I will take that out of whatever flower I want to use and go to another flower. Like if I want to put a pink on a blue, I can do that. I may not know what I'm going to get when I'm finished, but I can do that. Okay, then I go and at the top of this style arm that we were looking at, there's a little lip called a stigmatic lip and it has a little bit of fluid on it. And I take the pollen and rub on that stigmatic lip, and there's three of them in here, and I do all three of them. Okay. Now, would you have a problem with bees um, messing up your, your cross here? Contaminating the cross? Yes. Usually not on the big tall ones like this. We as hybridizers have made flowers that are so large that the bees really aren't effective pollinators for them anymore. Um, the distance between the fall where the bee lights and the top of the style arm where we're crossing them has gotten so great that the bee doesn't touch this lip with the pollen. Okay. So we really don't have to, to do that. We can, if, if we think it's going to be contaminated, we can snap the falls off and that way the bee doesn't have any place to light and pollinate it. Okay. Well, now you're never just quite sure what you're going to get. It's kind of a, a guessing game, isn't it? Part of it is, sometimes if I cross a blue to a blue, I will know what I'm going to get. Uh, if I'm crossing a blue with a pink, I probably won't know everything that's going to be in that cross. I may have some idea of what's going to happen. And you can see in this cross that I've made right here, these were two parents. It's like uh, Brenda and Jack are married and they have children. Well. This is uh, Gold Kissed and Tom Johnson that I crossed. And this is the variation that I got from that cross. Sometimes it's amazing the colors and the patterns that come from those crosses. It really is. Well, once you've crossed it and you get your seed, um, what's the next step in the process? Okay, the, once I've pollinated, if it has set a pot of seed on it, that seed will take about two months to mature and when it's mature, it'll begin to crack open, that pod will begin to crack open and I'll harvest the seed. Then I will put that seed along with the parents, I've recorded what the two parents are, and I'll put that in a cup and hold it until about Thanksgiving. 
and then I'll plant it in a pot with a with a light potting mix. Okay. And then if I've been successful and winter's been nice to me, <laughs> the seed will germinate the following spring and I'll get a pot of seedlings like this. And I'll take those after they're up about two or three inches and I'll knock those out of the pot and line them out individually in the ground. Okay. About how long between the time that you cross to when you get a bloom and see what you've got? It takes about two years if you take good care of the seedlings that you've produced to get a bloom out of them. Uh, after, after they've been lied out in the ground, if I water them and take care of them, then the following spring they should bloom. Good. Well, what are some of your favorite crosses that you've made? One of my favorites is Ruth Black, which I named for my grandmother. A very special woman. She's responsible for all of my gardening talent. She was a great gardener and gave me a lot of wisdom and all, so I did name one for her that I'm very, very proud of. It's very colorful and I like a lot. Uh, another one that I like is Gold Kissed. It has wonderful, wonderful stalks and good flower production and a unique flower. It's a white with gold hafts and gold beard and then some purple markings at the haft. Okay. Well, um, in addition to hybridizing iris, you also sell them, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, that's a part of the business here. Okay. <laughs> and you have a catalog available for $3 in case people want to buy some iris from you. That's correct. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining the whole iris hybridizing process to us. Oh, you're welcome. It's been fun, Brenda. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.